Good morning and welcome to worship at the St. Thomas Reformed Church. This is a happy, happy day. I get to introduce to you our new co-pastor, uh, Pastor Ben Rowe. And first I want to give just a little background to this happy occasion. The search team for the pastor um, had been working long and hard for over a year um, looking for just the right person. And I want to give a special thank you to Michael Conforti and the members of the search team. Um, under Michael's really expert leadership and guidance, um, finally brought Pastor Ben here. But I think it was in March that we, that Pastor Jeff and Pastor and uh, Michael sat down and reformed what we were um, searching for, who we were searching for, from an associate pastor to a co-pastor. And when that happened, then it all came together. I think God was just waiting for us to figure it out, um, who that we needed to call. And, and then things just um, came into place and God brought this congregation and Pastor Jeff and Pastor Ben together. Um, certainly you are our prayer answered. And I hope that we, this congregation, also is your prayer answered. Um, uh, Pastor Ben comes from Sioux Center, Iowa, a reformed congregation there. And um, I think you may have been looking for uh, a congregation more um, diverse and maybe more inner city and and we, we hope that we are a blessing to you as you are a blessing to us. Um, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Ben will be sharing um, all the responsibilities of ministry. Some will land more on Pastor Jeff's plate, some more on Pastor Ben's plate, especially Christian um, education and discipleship, as well as other areas. So um, Pastor Ben has brought his whole family with him, his wife Emily, um, and four children, Christine, Gwendolyn, Lydia, and William. Uh, and we are just so glad, so glad that you are finally here. Um, so I would like to introduce to the congregation and on behalf of the congregation and Pastor Jeff and the staff and the consistory of the St. Thomas Reformed Church, I welcome you and thank you for coming. Pastor, co-pastor Ben Rowe. Thank you, Rebecca. In church, it's so good to be worshiping with you as we gather in God's presence this morning. And there's some people here this morning, and yet uh, we are worshiping together uh, online. But even though we're absent in body, we're present uh, together in spirit uh, in Christ Jesus. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 130. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. My soul waits for the Lord. Hope in the Lord. Church, pray with me. Heavenly Father God, you are the God of all creation and we wait for you this morning. Our souls wait as those who wait for the morning. Heavenly Father, our hope is in your steadfast love. It's in you. Oh Lord, there is no darkness. In you there is mercy and grace that is new each and every single morning. It's poured out on us at every breath that we take. So God, this morning in worship we gather to proclaim glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are Lord of this morning. You are Lord of this moment and you are Lord of all that follows in this life. It's in your name we pray, amen.
come before the Lord this morning, do you join with me in prayer as we confess our sins? Loving Lord, you've given us precious life. Forgive us for letting the world tell us how to live it, for getting caught in busyness and forgetting you day to day, for letting time slip away and not taking the time to notice your wonder, for not thanking you every day whether we feel joy or heartache and for not showing your love to those around us. May we instead praise your name by living each day for you. Please help, guide, and strengthen us. Amen. Love him, love him, love him in the morning. 
you're encouraged this morning church is while we were still weak at the right time Christ died for us God proves his love for us and that while we were still sinners Christ died for us and surely then we have been justified and saved through him believe this good news and go forth to live in peace. Amen. As we come before God's word, let's join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, as, as we now turn to old, old words, we pray that by the power of your spirit, they would become very new for us, that these words would fall upon open ears and open minds and open hearts that we might claim them for ourselves and so live in your presence. Through Christ we pray. Amen. From the letter to the Ephesians, reading in chapter 5. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that's debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Be careful then how you live not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time. There are dozens of tales, some true and some apocryphal, about Yogi Berra, the peerless all-star Hall of Fame catcher, the New York Yankees. Yogi has bequeathed the world, many pearls of wisdom. The most famous is, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, but there were many others. Why don't you pair them up in threes? Or 
You can observe a lot just by watching. This is my favorite yogi story. I, I hope you haven't heard it before. One early evening in, in 1961, after a day of spring training in Florida, a pair of Yankees, Mickey Mantle and Whitey Ford and Yogi Berra, were sitting outside of their motel, observing a lot just by watching. Suddenly, Yogi's attention was drawn to a little girl who was playing on a steeply sloped, corrugated tin roof on a, on a building right across the street. Why she was there, he, he couldn't imagine. And he grew worried as she teetered closer and closer to the roof's edge. And sure enough, there came that moment when he realized that she was going to fall. And that's when Yogi, quick as a cat, leaped to his feet, dashed across the street, made an acrobatic dive, and caught the little girl just before she hit the pavement. Perfect timing. The story doesn't end there, however. Unfortunately, Yogi took the fine edge off of his otherwise praiseworthy effort when out of sheer force of habit, he threw the little girl down to second base. Perfect timing. So yesterday, I'm sitting over at Brewer's Beach, minding my own business, sitting there on a beach chair. Some guy comes up to me and uh, says, so are you a local? And of course, me being the wannabe that I am, I said, well, not really. And he said, well, we just moved here and I was wondering where you got this beach chair. And I said, well, um, I, I kind of went to a friend's house and just snatched it when he wasn't at home. And, uh, but you know, Completely out of character, I, th I thought I would be cordial. And so I asked, um, so where are you from? And the person says, from Iowa. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, is your name Ben? And sure, I was so glad I wasn't drinking an adult beverage at the time. And I explained to him that I, I liberated the beach chair I was using from the parsonage. And I saw that there were some more there, and I would go get some more for him. So Ben, there you go. I've got a couple more in the truck. Perfect timing. And Jeff, when you watch this, just so you know, you might want to stop at Walmart because there are no more beach chairs in the parsonage. It is that perfect time again when people are able to take some vacations. Jeff and Kelly and, and Anna are relaxing somewhere. He didn't tell me where and he gave me explicit instructions that I was not to call or to email, not like I wanted to talk to him anyway. But this is my vacation. This is what he does every year. Except now he's finding new ways to twist the knife. When, you're invited, when your pastor invited me to, to preach in August, I thought, wow, what a change. Usually he gets me to come in, in September, the, the, the heart of the, the hurricane season. But he gets the last laugh again. Church is shut down. The Delta variant is raging. A tropical storm. Yeah, your pastor, he's, he's quite a guy you all got here. And let me also just say that you're not all that charming either. I guess it was a year ago that, um, that Jeff asked me if I would preach a couple of times for him since all of the services back then were remote and he had been here you know, pretty much every Sunday, month after month after month, because because of COVID, and I thought, sure, I can do that. I, you know, I'll record up where I am in New York. I'll play it up there, and I'll play it here. What's, you know, two birds with one stone? Good for me. But I did use the opportunity to um, to take a take a couple of swipes at him. And it was all in good fun. But after the airing of the service. 
a, a member of, of your congregation here um, came to his defense and, and emailed me the, the next morning and asked why I always had to be making fun of your poor pastor. And being the good pastor that I am and realizing how distressed this, this person was, I, I tried to put the best possible spin on it. I, I said, well, you know, that's just male bonding. You know, that, that boys being boys. We can't really tell each other how much we love each other, so we do it this way. But I took note. So when I was here a couple of months ago, he was off lollygagging somewhere else. I didn't offer a single word of derision that Sunday. And then after the service, more than, than one of you came up to me and asked, how come I didn't shred Jeff? It's the only thing they like about my being here. Like I said, you guys are, are tough too. Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time. Make the most of time. And the next phrase is, because the days are evil. Funny, isn't it, how words written 2,000 years ago sound so hauntingly contemporary? Pandemic? Storms, Haiti, Taliban closing in on Kabul. There is evil everywhere. And if you read Ephesians, the, the list of what's characterized as, as evil is, is, is almost more like, like foolishness or wastefulness or, or pettiness. You know, it's not the notorious evil individuals. It's not the Hitlers or, or the Bin Ladens or, or, depending on your politics, the Democrats or the Republicans. This list in Ephesians is more kind of the insipid, unimaginative, petty brand of, of evil. It's, it's, it's the two-bit self-destruction in, in which we indulge. You know, the the thud of a hangover, the tarnished lung, the tawdry gossip at someone else's expense, the little white lies we tell to get a little more. And Paul suggests that, that these, are, these are symptoms of a, of a deeper problem. And we have to admit our lives are sometimes confused and, and disordered Sometimes pointless, we reel from one mistake to the next, and sometimes they just seem to compound themselves. You know, we're foolish. We're, we're suckers for social media clickbait. We're bewitched by, by demagogues. Such is the time in which we live. And Paul says, make the most of time. And, and we, we, we interpret that to mean, well, you keep busy. You move fast, you get ahead, you catch up. You know, we, middle class, Protestant work ethic, upwardly mobile achievers, you know, we know all about making the most of time. Drunkenness may not be our particular brand of sin, but for many of us, we are drunk with activities, things to do, expectations to meet, kids to carpool, meetings, civic organizations, dinner parties, fundraisers. And if a day on the calendar is, is unfilled, we better find something to do to fill it because our self-worth is at risk. It's all wrapped up in the things we do. I went into... Um, to Dunkin' Donuts the other day. I place my order, the guy rings it up, and he, and he looks up at me, and he changes the price. He reduces it, I can see it on the register, he reduces it by 10%. And because I'm standing there in my collar, I think, 
I must be getting the clergy discount even though I'm not in Iowa. I took the receipt and took a look at it and there it said right there, senior citizen discount. The blunt reminder that things are ticking down. Time is running out. In a few years, in a few years, I'll retire, and then what? What will I do? Who will I be? Will I have any worth in the eyes of my neighbor, or will they just look at me with sympathy? Will I have any sense of self-worth? How am I going to stay busy? You know, making the most of time. And that's what we think, right? That's how we make the most of time. We fill time. We use time, we find quality time, we keep moving, we don't stop, we don't look back, and we have a pretty dim view of those who waste time or kill time. Make the most of time. How long have we been at this now? Got a clock right up there, which usually doesn't mean anything to a preacher, but about 30 minutes or so doesn't apply so much today because of the weather, because of the storm, but another thing happened the last time I was here. I heard a bit of carping about how the service starts now at 10 o'clock as opposed to the days when it started at 9 o'clock. And the carping went something like this. It takes up the whole morning. It used to be we could be at the beach or on the boat by noon. Now, sure, church is important, but, but couldn't we get done with it a little sooner? And I confess, I was in complete agreement with Randy about this. Keep moving. Don't stop. Don't let time catch up. And don't even think about going more than an hour when you're here, unless, of course, the preacher has something to sing, which you have nothing to worry about this morning. Think what is needed is a way for us not just to fill time, but to fulfill time. Maybe you watched this past week the Field of Dreams game on on Thursday evening in Iowa, of course. I'm sure Jeff didn't watch it because he's a Philistine. But even in this evil and cynical age, the nostalgia was, was so heartwarming, especially if you had seen the movie. In fact, all the hype leading up to it had me kind of rethinking scenes from, from the movie. There's this, this one point where where the question is asked, is this heaven? It wasn't theology, it didn't pretend to be theology, but it was talk about fulfilled time, about meaning and, and purpose, and this inward blessed assurance that all is well. And at the conclusion of this particular scene, as I was remembering, I actually went back to YouTube it. And as I watched it, in my eyes, I was just welling up, was just filled with tears. A dad playing catch with his son. I don't know if there is a dad alive whose eyes wouldn't well up watching the scene playing catch, or, or maybe it's shooting hoops, or, or maybe it's doing a puzzle, or going fishing, or whatever it is. That moment, if we are aware enough, when time, when time is heavenly, a time absolutely filled with love, a perfect time. Not every Sunday, but many there is a richness and a, and a fullness to the time. I know those of you in this church and 
what it means to walk through one of those three doors. What you experience as you come in, comfort and reliability and assurance, respite, confidence, sanctuary. And for an hour, not more, for an hour, the time is fulfilled. Jesus promised that where two or three were gathered in his name, he would be right there in their midst to be in the presence of the Lord. I'd say that's fulfilling time, making the most of time, a perfect time. And it's one of the things that's been so excruciatingly painful about these past 18 months. And here we are again. We've not been able to share these moments of fulfilled time and worship. We've done the best we can to bring the church into, into our homes through technology. It's worked for a while, but let's admit it's just not the same. In the book of Ephesians, we're reading in chapter 5 today, but up to this point, Paul has already told us a number of important things. He tells us that God sent God's own son into this sinful, broken, yes, evil world so that God could reclaim it. We're told that in Jesus, the dividing walls of hostility between Jew and Greek, between man and woman, slave and free, black and white, presumably even between Democrat and Republican, has been torn down. And most importantly, that wall that separated us from God has also been torn down in Christ. In Jesus and through Jesus, we become the children of God. In Christ, nobody's become somebody's. In Christ, our time is now God's time. And Paul says, we didn't do this. God did it. Which means, I suppose, our days don't need to be frantically filled with our attempts at salvation. The outcome of the world doesn't depend on us or our favorite politicians. Meaning and purpose has already been assured and guaranteed and seized by Jesus Christ. Our lives count for something because they are caught up in the grand purposes of God. This time in which we live is God's time. And we make the most of it by keeping time with God. It's true, isn't it, that sometimes we feel like the girl on that roof. The slope is steep and slippery. Our footing uncertain. You're almost convinced that you're going to fall, and sometimes we even do. And sometimes, many times, just like that girl, out of nowhere come the everlasting arms to catch us. And yes, sometimes we hit, ground, hit, hit the ground, and sometimes we even hit rock bottom. But even there, even then, in that moment, in that time, God picks us up and holds us close, perfect timing. And in that perfect time, you begin to believe that the world is not left to chance. There is some kind of purposeful rhythm. That there really is an involved, immediate, caring, attentive God watching over every one of us. Here in your church, in this out of the way and unimportant little rock in the middle of a sea among everyday folk like us.
even in the midst of a pandemic, God is present. And for now, for this hour of worship, maybe God's perfect timing is that we are joined together by the power of the Holy Spirit as brothers and sisters, allowing those everlasting arms still to gather us in, even though we are socially distanced knowing that somehow we are caught up in the mystery of salvation, in the mystery of God's time, and are held in the palm of his hand. We continue our worship of God this morning with giving of tithes and offerings and gifts. You can do this through the church website, and I'm sure you can do this by mail. We pray that you will use this time to continue to support the ministry of this church. We wait upon you. 
we wait upon you. We wait upon you. We wait upon you. We wait upon you. into this time of prayer I'd like to encourage you to keep at prayer the Roe family and the new adventure that they are on and their new call to ministry here in, in St. Thomas obviously with the weather as it is we pray for safety for all Virgin Islanders and people in Puerto Rico and Hispaniola Keep in prayer the people of Haiti, for whom calamity seems never to cease. We'd ask as well that you keep Jimmy McNicholas and George Ann in your prayers. And obviously, the community here in the Virgin Islands with um, COVID such that it is, and of course, it's not just here, but across the globe. sure there are many concerns and celebrations in your own heart and we'll use these moments to lift those all to God for God's consolation and for us to give thanks let us pray together gracious God as we come into this time we seek to make the most of it to be assured that we, even now, whether we are in this sanctuary or in our homes or in a hotel, wherever we are, that we know by the power of your spirit, you are here with our spirits. And that there's nothing that can ever, ever, ever separate us from your love. Keep us mindful of that in hard times. Keep us mindful of that in good times when we think it's all because of us. Don't ever let us forget that it's all because of you. We lift to you today concerns of this congregation. For Jimmy, George Ann in particular, we lift to you the celebration of this congregation for the Roe family joining in ministry. We pray your blessings upon Ben, but also upon his family as a new life begins for them as well. And while he has an, a role to move into, they're going to need the time and the courage and the patience and the support to find their ways into this community. So we pray, God, that you'd be very present to them and very present to this congregation and their support. We pray for safety for Virgin Islanders today, that this storm would pass with little damage, and that in the six to eight weeks ahead, the islands would be spared Protect those in the path of this storm and those in the path of every storm. We lift to you today our, our brothers and sisters, our friends in Haiti, who yet again have suffered a natural catastrophe. The suffering there, God, is a suffering that you know so well, and a suffering for which your heart breaks. And we pray that in ways that we can be supportive as a community, as Christians, and as a nation, that you would show us that way. 
heal those who are ill, comfort those who are alone, protect those who are in harm's way. Be near to us. And most of all, give us the faith to experience that nearness so that in all that we do, in all that we think, in all that we say, in every interaction, you will be glorified. All of this we lift to you in the name of the one you sent to us to heal a broken world, to tear down walls of hostility. The one who lifts us up and joins us together and who taught his disciples to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now may God who caused the light to shine out of darkness, shine in your lives to give you the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in Jesus Christ in this perfect time and in every time.